Hey there, I'm Damien from Game Innovator, and today I should be talking about EA games. So, as you may have noticed, there's been quite a few videos, quite a few blog posts, comments, etc., etc., all from uh, quite a few people voicing their um, concerns with EA games, you know, saying things like they're going to uh, bring down the game industry, they're never going to order from EA ever again, etc., etc. But let us look at the other side of the coin. Let's just see how EA is actually doing when it comes to sales and profits. Just uh, go to the thingy there. So we've got the earnings releases. Just have a look at a couple of the uh, previous years. So we've got uh, trailing 12 month financial highlights. That's basically the uh, previous 12 previous 12 months from a particular date, so we're going from the ending of a particular year from one to another, and uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, just starting from here, we've got, uh, so we'll be looking at the uh, net income, which is the, uh, well basically the profit minus all the costs, so that would be uh, equipment, marketing, salaries, you know, that sort of stuff. So GAAP is uh, generally accepted accounting principles. So basically it's a particular way of um, calculating income basically. Um, well just the yeah, accounting stuff in general basically. I won't go into too much detail on it. But um, basically they've got GAAP and non-GAAP which basically is the way that they calculated it themselves. Keep in mind that just because you know this was not done according to GAAP um, you know, it doesn't mean this is completely false because, you know, given the way different companies operate, the way they got money going in and out, they could be um, a bit more accurate than GAP. But in, in any case, they have both of them anyway. So just having a look at that from 11 to 2011 to 2012, went from a loss of 173 million to 175 for GAP net income, and from 311 to 151 non GAP. So a bit of a difference between the two, but um, overall ending up in profit by the end of. 2012, and if we go to from 2012 to 2013, we notice that uh, yeah, they went from having a 175 million gap net income to 36 million loss, but the non-gap went up from 151 million to 551 million. If we go from 2013 to 2014. Looks even more interesting. Uh, we've got the gap net income, so we've got a loss from uh, 36 million for 2013 to 847 million by the end of 2014. That's the net income. And non gap is 551 to 833, so looking pretty good there as well. So obviously, there's a hell of a lot more. Um, to the story than just the overall figures, but um, really I'm not going to bother going into all the different items they've listed, you know, for where the money is going in and out. I don't think we've got the patience for that at the moment. But uh, just looking at the overall income, well, they've had their highs and their lows, but uh, yeah, as you can see, they're doing pretty damn well when it comes to uh, net income, as you can see. Even if they have been going up and down a bit, they've uh, overall been getting uh, better and better. So, uh, yes, by the looks of things, they don't seem to be in uh, too much of, uh, you know, there's not too much of a chance of them uh, failing and taking down the game industry with them or anything like that. And there's not exactly, uh, doesn't seem to be much of a chance of them uh, losing out in uh, terms of the, um, well, terms of sales and such either, so good on them in that case. And if we have a look at their share price, as you can see went from when they started trading, they uh, slowly went up, they uh, hit, uh, the, this is the share price by the way, uh, they hit a bit of a, what appears to be a horizontal resistance line around this point, although they did manage to break through it briefly before going back down, so they managed to establish a resistance line at roughly 61, whoops, 61, uh, we did say 61.40 briefly, so we'll just go with that. There we go, 61.40. Then of course we had that wacky market crash that drove them all the way down. They trended sideways for a bit, managed to break up out of their little slump. And yeah, as you can see, the share price has, uh, well, pretty quickly recovered, as you can see. In fact, uh, it's back to uh, pretty much where it was before, and it seems to have hit a point of resistance, the same point of resistance once again 
we'll just have to wait and see whether they manage to break free from that and from this resistance, well it appears to be a bit of a weak resistance line here see if their share price can keep, can keep going up and of course there's plenty more indicators to take into account but really we're just having a very 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 quick look at um, how they're doing so there you go even though I uh, can't recommend any of their recent games their uh, financial status seems to be pretty good at the moment even though, even though their PE ratio is pretty god awful but uh, Yes, they're doing uh, pretty nicely there, so there you go. Playing the devil's advocate here. And with that in mind, I shall leave you with this stock photo right here, which um, I think just about sums it up pretty nicely. So thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, well, Hopefully we'll all be uh, waiting for the uh, next quarterly report from EA Games with bated breath. But until that happens, this has been uh, Damien Didvich signing off.